everybody. I am doing a quick check-in on a very humid day of the garden. And as you know, if you followed parts one, two, and three, it was perfect. But as luck would have it in the country, there are critters. Now, you know I'm an urban gardener and I didn't have to deal with anything except raccoons and the occasional rat um, bothering my tomatoes or my garden. Raccoons are a huge problem in the city and guess what? <laughs> They're a huge problem in the country. And because chickens live here in a, a hen house out there, uh, raccoons are here every day, every night, sorry, every night looking to get in that chicken coop. Now, I don't know if this is raccoon activity because r raccoons were only interested in grubs in my garden in Pacific Palisades. They weren't interested in my tomatoes. But something happened last night and I'm going to have to show it to you. So, I'll walk around in a second, but um, it, it gave me pause because over the course of interviewing a lot of people in a lot of places for my channel, they've had problems with voles and moles and groundhogs and uh, even snakes, I think. I'm trying to think now what all, and of course deer. Huge problem with deer in Ashland, Kentucky. They're just roaming the streets of the city. But for some naive reason, I thought I could develop this beautiful little garden and not protect it. But that reality ended last night. Now, part of the problem is, well, they say this about weather in Illinois. If you don't like the weather, just wait 10 minutes because it will change. <laughs> and that is the case. It can be sunny and beautiful like this. Something just bit me. And then 10 minutes later, a thunderstorm with lightning. It's incredible. And it has kind of beaten up these plants a little bit. But I'm very pleased that the peppers have uh, shown some resilience and bounced back. They were looking really droopy after I secure them the other day. Okay, we're just gonna take a walk around and see all the devastation. Yeah, so here we have uh, this tomato got chewed on. I've got all these tomatoes down here uh, that got um, eaten or chewed on. And let's see, here's another one down here. You see that? And there's little bites and things on other ones. There's a big hole. I might as well take that one off. And nobody's going to want to eat that tomato. You know? Not to mention of that one. <laughs> no, 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 no. And... Oh. What else? Okay, so down here, there's all this stuff. And then this one and that one. If you have any ideas what is eating and chewing on my tomatoes, please let me know. And I, as long as I was down there, I went ahead and uh, picked up, cut off and uh, picked up. And this one's kind of rotted. I don't know what happened there. But... These plants have a lot more of this, and I don't, I didn't have this particular fungal disease in my garden, all those years in my garden, so I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of spotty, and the leaves turn yellow, and then they turn brown and crinkly, so I've got to pick all that up and put all that away, but, you know, my thoughts are, okay, I got a lot to learn, you know, I got a lot to learn, and I got a lot to uh, uh, figure out, because, uh, it's just me, and uh, at least right now, 
and uh, I got to figure out if I can how much you know how, how much I can handle how much space uh, you know I can actually handle for myself look at that isn't that great I'm gonna show you that in a second <laughs> but uh yeah because the uh, weather's so different it's so humid I can't even seem to get my breath and uh, but you can grow some some amazing things I mean we have I say we it's not my garden <laughs> but uh, there are two moringa plants one is a volunteer and it is it grew up in the side of a pot and it is amazing it is huge and I will show you some of the other aspects of this garden in another video when I have more time and so so far you know nothing has ransacked the garden but just taken uh, a few tomatoes and the uh, the little squash thing that I set up you know I just wanted to get those vines initially off the ground so I just put in that little trellis little cage uh, I didn't have a cage to put them in so um, and what I've noticed is, you know, the main fruit set, you can see here, the main fruit set of these tomato plants are at the base of the stems before they started splitting numerous times with numerous suckers. And so it remains to be seen. I think for the cherry tomatoes, there will be more production up higher. Uh, but in terms of the Romas and the big boys, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to set big fruit up higher off of those suckers because this is already getting to almost the end of July. Anyway, I was just having some thoughts, you know, a few days after I finished the garden and I thought I would share. And I hope you're doing well and thank you so much for watching this channel. I'm going to very quickly say goodbye. And here is what I harvested. It's gorgeous, most of which is going to ripen on the counter. And thanks so much for watching this channel. And I look forward to bringing you more updates from the country. Thanks so much.